Hi everyone, before we continue the video, I'd just like to ask you to please consider subscribing. And if you do, hit that notification bell just so you know when I post the next video up. And if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and leave a comment down below. Cue the glitch intro. <laughs> What's up everyone? This is like my first time doing one of these type of videos, so like... Bear with me, okay? A couple weeks ago, I asked the people on my Facebook post, I did a poll and see if they would like a uh, tips and tricks video on how to make better videos on your iPhone. So as you know, today, cameras are expensive, you know, people have a budget, but they still wanna make like little travel videos or whatever. The next best thing that you got is your iPhone. So as you know, your iPhone can take videos, obviously. Phones are uh, very underrated for the quality that you can get out of these things. The only reason why I'm doing this video here is because the lighting's good and uh, I've got my grandma over there making some food. <laughs> so if a smartphone is the only thing that you got, today I am gonna be telling you some tips and tricks on how to improve the quality of your videos just using your iPhone or smartphone or Galaxy or whatever, you, whatever you've got. <laughs> so the first thing I would tell you to do is to go to your camera settings. And here you'll be able to see the options that you have. There's a, a record and there's a record slow-mo. We'll talk about the slow-mo later, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna click on the record and you have these options, right? And now you have the frame rates and the um, HD settings. What I typically use is 60 frames per second at 180p, only because I like to do a lot of slow-mo things and a lot of filmmaking talk. It's more so in post-production where you can slow things down, but you can choose any of the options that you want. Next, we'll go into record slow-mo. Here, in my opinion, I'd like to use um, the 180p by 120 frames per second. Here, you get a little more smoother slow motion and it's a little more fast paced than the 720 by 240 frames per second. 240 frames per second is probably good for real slow motion. It'll be more slow mode and it'll be a little longer as in the 120 frames per second will be more cleaner in my in my opinion. The settings that you have with the slow motion and the camera rates, it really depends on what you really like. I would say just test them out and see which ones that you really like. So tip number two is uh, if you have a little bit more money on the side, you know, I got $15 to spend, I would recommend you using Filmic Pro. So Filmic Pro is an app that uh, it lets you use um, your camera settings within it in your phone uh, a little better and you also have a little more flexibility on the side. So let's open it up here. So once you open it up, you'll see the, uh, let's change Let's change this. So once you open it up, so look, look, there you guys are. <laughs> so once you open it up, uh, you'll be able to see the, um, on the bottom with that sort of sound bar. So yeah, here, here you'll be able to change the aperture of your camera settings. And here is your focus that you got. There's a lot more options that are within this app that I won't get into too much. I'll say if you really want to, um, just leave a comment down below. I can go through it a little bit. But uh, if you do decide to get it, just play around with it a little bit and it'll be a lot better. And you can find those things out for yourself. Highly recommend it if you're trying to take your smartphone videos a little bit up a notch a little bit. That's personally what I use when I use my my smartphone. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is a little film technique that I use with my phone. Um, usually I'm not sure about the Samsungs or any of the Androids but I do know that iPhone has a time lapse option which you can use for hyperlapses and uh, hyperlapses have uh, been used by people like Sam Calder uh, and a few other YouTubers. He's pretty much the guy that I really like it out. But you can still do it off of your iPhone. So to do this, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna go to your time-lapse option and you're gonna wanna slowly be walking with your camera around an object that you would like to do a hyperlapse over. So here what you wanna do is you wanna be taking the small little steps and you wanna slowly pan, slowly, slowly pan over the object you're going around. It will take a while and um, your arms can start to hurt after a while depending how big the thing that you're doing. But in the end, the, uh, the results, if you take it good and stabilized, uh, you can get a pretty good shot out of it with the iPhone. So there's, there's another one. 
So now we go into tip number four. Gear. Tip number four is gear. Hmm. <laughs> if you got a little bit more money, you guys can spend a little money on some gear. So right here, you got a uh, knockoff Gorilla Pod with a little attachment for your phone that you can put on. You can, uh, you know, adjust these, wrap it around something, make a small little tripod. Easy, right? It's probably around ten, fifteen dollars. Easy. Next, we'll get into one of my favorite things to use, which is a gimbal. So a gimbal stabilizes your phone to get more smoother videos. What it essentially is, is there's gears inside that like really stabilize it. So in my opinion, I think this is probably one of the better things you can get for your smartphone. Um, this will run you a little bit higher in price. This is around $100 to $130, depending on the brand that you get and where you get it. In my opinion, uh, best place to get this is Best Buy. I know they run these for around $100. It's not too bad, but I mean, if you really want to take it up a notch with your iPhone videos, I would highly recommend one of these as they really enhance the smoothness of your videos. <laughs> so I have a bonus tip for you guys. On iPhones, you are able to make your own videos in the gallery itself. Uh, you can choose your music, time lengths that you can put it at, and these are for more so of like if you just want something really quick for like an event that you did or little trip that you took and you really don't want to edit or anything. It's a really nice useful thing if you want to get something quick out there. I thought I'd just throw it out there for you guys, but uh, let's take a look at how you do this. I think my grandma kind of thinks I'm weird because I'm talking to the camera. She's making food. <laughs> so what you're going to want to do is you want to go to your photos, and when you get this menu up, you're going to want to go to Memories. And then you'll be able to see all the memories that you took. And so you want to click this, right? And you just go click Play. It'll download all the videos that you have on there. This is a trip that I took to uh, Columbus, Ohio for one of my fraternity's conventions. So once it's finished editing, it'll play through and it'll start to give you um, different options that you want. So you can go to Gentle, Chill, uh, these are the type of uh, musics that you want to have. Um, you can go from short to long to medium, depending on how long you want the clip to be. And uh, that's basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, hope this really helped you guys out on trying to just make some little quick videos or even enhancing your videos uh, if you're trying to get into the game of videos. I know I'm pretty amateur myself, but I thought I'd just share you some of the things that I've learned through the year, so hope it helps. Um, you can add me on Instagram. Uh, you can check out my Facebook. Yeah, thanks you guys for watching again. Uh, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.